grab my blanket. One sec. So as you guys know, I've been experimenting a lot with Sorceress as of late. And with new findings, I am now using the new Hallucination set as my main set, which is giving me 32% damage and 28% crit chance, meaning that my native crit chance is 76.58% crit chance on my own without any synergy from an ally. This means that even if I'm playing with no crit synergies, it should be relatively consistent. And the reason why I started using this set is because they reworked the set recently so that the set bonus can be maintained with any hit on the boss. The buff lasts for two minutes or 120 seconds. And in order to refresh the buff, all you have to do is hit the boss with anything. It could be an auto attack. It could be a skill. They all refresh the two minute buff. And so it is effortless. Damage ceiling wise, the damage ceiling for hallucination is lower than nightmare. However, up to a certain crit chance, hallucination is more powerful than nightmare on average over a prolonged fight. Once you start getting into the territory of like 80, 90, 100%, then nightmare tends to be a bit more effective in terms of overall damage output. But you cannot always rely on your teammates, especially in like a non-health setting to always have buff for you. The other thing that's really nice about hallucination, though, it's not really a big point of contention it's not really a big deal is that the hallucination set is a lot better than the nightmare set when you don't have your igniter effect up when igniter isn't up and you're just building the meter hallucination will help you crit more of those skills on average it's not a big deal again because your damage outside of igniter is somewhat negligible but it's still worth noting regarding mana it's not that bad you do have to take at least one mana tripod so we take it on explosion and if you're still having a lot of issues even after that then you could also take it on punishing strike as well and forego the area tripod doomsday we keep the burn tripod regarding the rest of these skills, we kind of need to talk about it a little bit. I'm going to throw on level 2 Spirit Absorption just for simming inside Tristian. Raise your hand if after Doomsday, whatever, Arcane Rupture, you go right into Explosion Punishing Strike. If that's what you do, raise your hand. Okay, this is a habit that you're going to have to curb eventually. There's a reason for that. We need to understand the mechanisms of Arcane Rupture first. With the Igniter Engraving and Arcane Rupture, when you activate Arcane Rupture, any skill that's on cooldown has its cooldown instantly halved. So you can see that if I Frost Call, it's 20 seconds. Now it's 10 seconds remaining. So what does this mean? That means that the skill that we use after Doomsday will have its cooldown hauled before Arcane Rupture activates. Why this works with Frost Calling is because Frost Calling does some damage, but then it detonates at the end as well for a lot of its damage. You've seen me do it a lot, and maybe you do it too, where you Doomsday and then squeeze in Frost Call before the Meteor actually lands. This is definitely a lot easier to do when you have the Yearning effect from a supporter. So if you go into Trissian and you try this, you might find it to be a bit too tight and you can't actually arcane rupture before the doomsday land. But in a real raid scenario, when you have the yearning effect and you have that 8% attack speed, it's pretty easy to land and it's even easier if you have a food buff like an event food buff. But it's not the only option. There's a few other options. If you do not have frost call up, it also works to do it with rhyme arrow, but you have to space bar. If you don't space bar, then this is what will happen. You won't be able to enter Arcane Rupture before the Meteor lands. There is one other option beyond that, which is Esoteric. But you'll see that if I try to do that... It doesn't land in time. How can it be possible to do this if you have a food buff? and B, an attack speed buff from 
an ally, like a Deathblade or a Gunlancer or later on an Aeromancer, if someone else gives you attack speed, you can fit in Esoteric Reaction between the Doomsday and the Arcane Rupture. Generally speaking, it's a lot safer to just do cross call because you know that that's always going to work no matter what. The problem with Rhyme Arrow is having to spacebar it means that you're burning your spacebar, which can be risky at times. But because we often use frost call just to fill up the meter anyways, sometimes it will be on cooldown when you have full meter. So you want to have that Rhyme Arrow as an option so that you have something that's getting its cooldown halved before your arcane rupture. It's not worth really using Blaze because Blaze doesn't really do a lot of damage. Blaze does damage over time and it'll contribute a lot to your damage outside of the igniter state, but it's not something that you want to throw uh, before the doomsday, if that makes sense. Okay, so as I mentioned before, uh, a lot of you have this habit. You arcane rupture and then you explosion and punishing strike. And I told you that that's not the greatest habit, and there's a reason for that. It's not something that you can really do right now, unless you're wailing. Eventually, though, you will come to a point where you have a high level cooldown gem on Esoteric Reaction. And by a high level gem, I'm talking about level 9 or 10. It's got to be level 9 or 10. It won't work well if it's lower than that. You could also do this with Rhyme Arrow, but if you want to do this with Rhyme Arrow, then you have to change the configuration of Rhyme Arrow to Quick Preparation instead. If you use Rhyme Arrow with Quick Preparation or Esoteric Reaction with a high level cooldown gem right after your Arcane Rupture, it'll actually come off of cooldown before Arcane Rupture ends. Before I cast Explosion, I threw Esoteric Reaction, and you can see now the time is ticking, and it matches up with Arcane Rupture. I can actually fit in uh, one more at the very end with the Arcane Rupture bonus. If you cast your Esoteric Reaction after the Punishing Strike, it won't come off of cooldown in time. It's just enough time, so you're gonna have to press that button fast. But this is with uh, Rhyme Arrow. You can see that these skills can just barely fit at the end. So what it pretty much is, is an entire extra skill of one of your secondary skills within the Arcane Rupture. Which one between Rhyme Arrow and Esoteric would you say is better to do? Esoteric would be better. If we look at the damage of each of these skills. 27 million on Frost Call. 26 million Esoteric Reaction. 28 million Rhyme Arrow. I value the damage of these three skills, but at the end of the day, they're close enough where it doesn't really matter that much. And it's just which of the three skills are you casting two times and which is only once. Do you have any mana issues without Nightmare? As long as you're not spamming your attacks too badly, it shouldn't be too big of an issue. But again, if you're still having problems with mana, you can just switch that over and then your issue should be solved. You also have to remember that inside an actual raid, you'll be getting MP support if you're playing with like a bard, for example. But yeah, you have a lot of options for mana. Uh, your teammates can give you mana. You can use mana food, though if you don't want to use mana food, that's okay too. You can slap on mana tripods. And if you're really, 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 really hurting on mana, you're just casting everything like crazy. You can slap legendary mana on something like esoteric reaction, and that will also do the trick. Are you using Keen Blunt? No. 
The crit chance is good, but I don't think it's high enough where you would really merit using Keen Blunt. Unless you know you're always going to be playing with crit synergies, then you can make an argument for it. How do you build this as a 5x3? No difference. The only thing is, in a 5x3 configuration, if you're even considering using the hallucination set, you have to drop Precise Dagger. You must, because then you're overloading on crit. So just a standard setup of, I don't have Spirit Absorption. This is Simming Yearning. These five are, are your core. Why well, use Mana Tripod on Explosion rather than Punishing Strike? The burn damage is somewhat negligible and the extra AoE on Punishing Strike can make it a bit more versatile to use. That's really the main reason why. Is it possible to use Adrenaline with this instead of Cursed All? Yes, but if you're going to run Adrenaline, then I would recommend dropping Inferno for Squall if you're going to do that, because Inferno's cast time is really slow without it being at level 10. That way, if you're running Adrenaline, there's a pretty smooth combo you can do, which you'll have to develop some small muscle memory for, but it's a priming combo, which is uh, Blaze, Arcane Cancel, And then that'll go six stacks before the first dupes they lands. Again, in slower motion, it's Blaze, Squall, Arcane, Face Cancel, Doomsday, Cross Call, Arcane. And then that'll always be six stacks before the Doomsday actually lands. The reason why Arcane Rupture cancel is because when you cancel Arcane Rupture with Spacebar, it still gives you the Adrenaline stack, so it's a free Adrenaline stack without burning a skill. Will this be on YouTube? No.